Hi, my name is Debbie Ward. I'm um, Associate Dean of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at the University of California, Davis, and I am the PI of the Interdisciplinary Nursing Quality Research Initiative grant I'm going to tell you about. We want to talk about this interprofessional research project. We have a team of nurses and psychologists who work to design an intervention for patients undergoing spine or neck surgery. The intervention itself is based in a cognitive behavioral approach using the principles of motivational interviewing and a bunch of other bright ideas in healthcare delivery, such as Wagner's chronic care model. If you don't already know the term motivational interviewing, it has to do with an approach to clinical care that seems obvious, except that until recently, many clinicians didn't apply it in their practices and clinical systems largely ignored it. The simple and brilliant idea is that the patient, not the clinician, is in charge of the vast majority of health and illness behaviors. Unless you're in a hospital bed and I hand you a pill and provide you the water with which to swallow it, the job of taking medication is in the hands of you, the pill taker. Or I can shake my finger at you and say, exercise, but whether that happens depends on you and the circumstances of your life, not mine. So the clinician and the health system that would like to influence patient and population behavior needs to interact with patients in ways that support and promote positive health behaviors and behavior change. One expert in this field has called this approach dancing, not wrestling. We can move together better by dancing than by wrestling. This wheel is a little elegant, simple tool, like motivational interviewing, that we use in our intervention. Doctors Wanless and Fishman from our team developed and perfected the use of this wheel to help both patients and clinicians focus during the clinical visit on the patient's highest interest. Notice the tagline at the top, let's decide what to focus on. Our intervention to support patient self-management of pain is carried out over three sessions one pre-surgical session, and two post-operative. In brief, we offer patients the time and some tools to use so that they play the leading role in managing their own pain. We help them plan for pain self-management and to formulate plans in which they have a high level of confidence. So our clinicians ask things like, how successful do you think you would be in walking around the block every evening? And if a patient says, oh, on a scale from 1 to 10, I would have to realistically say I'd be about a 3 on that, the clinician might say, well, what about a plan in which you would be a 7 or 8 on that scale, really confident that you could carry out the plan you want? And in uh, the best of circumstances, the patient might say, oh, okay, I'll walk once a week. I know I can do that. We believe that our piece of work is a part of several earth-moving shifts in healthcare services, and one is the shift from professional to patient-centered care. And central to this is the change from an encounter style of monologue and lecturing to one of dialogue and coaching. A second is a shift toward insisting on close attention to outcomes and not just paying for care regardless. We're part of a large movement beginning to insist on beneficial outcomes from our very expensive clinical interventions. And don't ask me why we haven't insisted on this before. A third is the shift from an acute care model of everything, payment, clinical design, everything, based in units of care to a model, which is presaged in the chronic care model, based on trajectories of care. Our first audience is our patients in the UC Davis Spine Center and the other patients as more clinicians try this approach as we teach it. Perhaps even more importantly, our audience for this study is our clinical colleagues. In the Spine Center, as we went about our study, we um, instigated high curiosity and interest from nurse and physician colleagues about just what it was we were doing with these patients. 
One of us, Deb Fishman, has done a number of workshops on this approach to the medical community, and we have some nurse and surgeon-focused workshops planned after our data are analyzed. But I want to tell you about one of our most successful outreach activities. We're making some short video clips about our approach, and we ask the neurosurgical chief and a lead nurse to be actors in our scripts. They enthusiastically agreed, and unbeknownst to them, we'll be enacting just the approaches we want them to use in actual clinical practice. We think they may love their scripted lines so much they'll use them forevermore with patients. And with the website we're developing, we intend to bring our approach to health system leaders at many levels. So what? We see evidence from our work in the clinic and in the larger health system that our approach is regarded as sensible, forward-looking, and doable. And in our ongoing meetings with you, our colleagues, we'd like to think with all of you about where next we should go. So now what? One of our tools, the wheel that Deb and Rick Wanless um, created and perfected has been widely used in our system and is in moderate circulation in our region. We think the website we're completing with its star quality video clips will help us bring this approach to a wide audience. Of course, we have publications in the works. And our health system at UC Davis, with its particular emphasis on telehealth, is going to be a perfect place to apply our self-management approaches to a variety of conditions in health teaching. So thanks to our team, our colleagues, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Program Office, the Inquiry Program, and of course the patients who participated in this study. Here's to enhance self-management skills in all of us, more dancing and less wrestling. <laughs>